welcome back to Moto Joshing. So I just wanted to show you the kind of kit and tool stuff um, that I generally carry in my bag um, at all times um, and uh, kind of, you know, what we've got here and why. So um, first of all, we'll just do the kind of tool stuff that I generally carry in the bag um, for my bike. Um, and uh, obviously that's, you know, not including the, um, the tyre, uh, the actual toolkit that's under the seat of my bike that came with it. Um, that's always there anyway, um, and if you don't have a little toolkit for your bike, certainly get one of those. But this is additional to that, these are the things that I carry. So um, first off, I actually have spare fuses of varying sizes and uh, and uh, the actual voltage. Um, I don't just carry these for myself, hence why I've got some of the smaller ones and the bigger ones. Um, these are actually because, you know, if someone that you're with out on a ride, or you see a biker on the side of the road and maybe his bike's screwed, um, you know, especially if it's electronics, then fuses are something to consider. So um, this isn't necessarily just for myself, but if you can help our bro out there, then why not? You know, that's, that's a, probably a worthwhile thing to be able to do. Um, so further to that, um, I've actually got this little gadget thing, and I think it's got a torch on it. But the main purpose of this gadget is actually that this is a heating element. So in Scotland in winter, um, obviously it gets, uh, it gets pretty damn cold. Um, and certainly on my ER6, I've actually had the uh, steering freeze, uh, the steering lock freeze on me, so I couldn't actually get the steering lock off. So this thing is literally just a little battery power uh, device. Um, this has just got a heating element in it, so you literally just slide it out, and then it, uh, I think the, no, it's still got battery, that's actually heating, I can feel the heat off it. Um, so you just plop that in the actual key hole. Uh, you know and uh, and literally just just slide the thing out and it actually starts heating up really quickly um, And this will obviously melt the ice inside your steering lock um, This is a, probably only applicable to people like me that live in stupid places uh, certainly in winter that have problems like that, but I imagine people in uh, certain places in America Canada um, It's just a wee little device that um, I found really helpful. It was only a couple of quid on Amazon um, and uh, it's been invaluable for actually, you know, defrosting my lock a couple of times, um, especially because I leave the bike in work over the course of the day in minus temperatures, the bike will get cold, freeze, and then of course you're stuck because you can't actually get out there. Um, obviously not applicable to those fair weather fairies, so no need for that. Um, so one of the things I've got is actually a little plastic puck just to put on my side stand. You never know where you go, um, and it might be that, you know, if you go to a show or whatever, that you have to put your side stand on something a bit muddier, uh, or some, you know, uneven ground or whatever, so ha keep one of those in my bag at all times as well. Um, then we've got uh, tyre uh, plug kits, essentially, so uh, I've got the kind of two things. Uh, I've got corks on this one, because I've seen Final Destination, and I don't fancy getting shanked by my own tyre plug. Um, especially because that's in my bag most of the time. Um, I couldn't fit it under my seat. Um, so uh, always worried that you're going to get impaled by this kind of stuff. I think this one probably could do some damage too, but I can't really get a cork on it, whereas this one, which is the actual file and punch, um, really is the sharp one. So I have a couple of corks on there just to try and help that out. But um, certainly if you don't have you know, a kind of tyre plug kit or tyre repair kit, um, you know, you just don't know. Um, you know, it's all well and good having RAC and, and all the rest of it. But uh, you never know when you're going to need this stuff. So I've always got that on me. Uh, then it comes with uh, rubber cement and uh, tyre pressure gauge. Um, one of the things I have is, uh, I, because I'm a keen mountain biker, I actually have uh, O2 canisters um, and the valve. So um, you can use these to uh, pump your tyre if you do that, that repair. Um, these are probably massively... Um, big enough to do the tyre pressure on, on your motorbike but I've got three of those uh, just in case um, and you know so you never know when you're going to need that um, the one thing to note with O2 uh, you know pumping it, uh, with your tyres is that stuff doesn't because it's o, it, you know O2 it doesn't last as long as you know pumping your tyre up from a regular um, you know uh, pump so you are only going to have limited time to actually go get proper air um, and so um, whilst I recommend that on the side of the road it's probably not the thing um, so cable ties always a good one can never have enough uh, one thing people always forget is um, I actually find these things incredibly uh, useful just to have a couple of um, key rings um, you never know when you're gonna bust your zip or you know the, the little tags on things uh, whatever it might be or it might be you need to you know join some cable ties or you know whatever 
it you know might be to keep something on your bike or you know your clothing so that's definitely one uh, that i carry with me um i have a carabiner this is actually i clip on the side of my bag just so i can clip my helmet uh to the side of the bag so i you know if i'm walking about town or whatever then i can just have that so um a good strength carabiner always good uh don't really need to go into too much details on these very obvious uh great tool you never know you're going to need vice grips on your bike if you break down the side of the road um so great tool bit heavy but in the bag i don't feel the weight therefore that comes with me everywhere um so the next thing is actually um a light stick um very simple People often forget about them, but, you know, you just crack it and then, you know, if you break down the side of the road at night, for instance, you can throw this uh, down on the floor, uh, you know, a good 20 feet in front of you and it's going to certainly just draw a little bit of attention. Um, if you don't, you know, we, I'm not in a car, I don't carry a big triangle, so that's one of those things. And the next thing, and kind of the mo one of the more important things, is having some sort of recovery membership. Um, certainly with my bike, uh, in the first year, I do get... Uh, RAC cover thanks to Kawasaki um, but again I think I've got that included in my insurance as well so I think I'm double covered but you never know when you're going to break down so that's certainly another thing uh, to certainly have especially if you've got an older bike or something a bit less reliable so the other things I generally have all the time is a spare pair of gloves normally thicker than whatever I've got on um, I'm always generally got my um, another pair of liner gloves you just don't know when it comes to certainly the weather in Scotland with it changing or whatever. You you just, you know, if you've got cold hands, even with heated grips that I've got on my bike, you just never know. So th those are definitely in there as well. Uh, again, balaclava and buff. Um, you never know. One thing I generally carry in my bag as well is actually a microfiber towel. Um, you know, you don't know if you're going to get caught short, get caught wet or whatever. So wherever you're turning up, um, it's always nice just to have that. Uh, to be able to dry yourself down and then I normally carry a, a quite thin hooded top with me as well because um, you never know uh, if it's going to be a little bit too cold for you and no one's as grumpy as a cold person on a motorbike I can assure you so um, those are the things I generally carry with me I uh, hope that was uh, somewhat illuminating it's always good to have waterproof bags for, for as much of your stuff as you can as well um, and uh, yeah that's just generally my loadout um, that's generally what I've always got on me um, and hope that's been somewhat entertaining um, as to, or slightly interesting. I know it's the, the boring bit of motorcycling, but for certainly newer riders, it's worth uh, asking questions over the kind of things you carry and, and what things you should have. Um, and it's very easy to, you know, turn the key and just go for a ride. But uh, if you get caught out, um, you know, what are you going to do? Call a pal, hopefully try to get a van. There's a lot of ball ache involved in that. And obviously the more self-sufficient you are out there, the better um, and certainly this might this stuff might not come in handy for me at all I might not get into that kind of problem but uh, you know it, it, it might become invaluable for someone else um, one of the things I don't really uh, have here at the moment that I do carry in my bag if I'm going on longer trips is actually a first aid kit um, and I think you know people are thinking about the tools and all the rest of it and uh, they kind of forget about the kind of basics of uh, survival for uh, certainly yourself so what I would say is certainly um, if you are going on longer trips, a lot, you know, just a little first aid kit uh, is probably a good thing to pack as well. So uh, hopefully that's kind of giving you some ideas um, and some, some, you know, thoughts behind my kit. Um, and obviously, if, if you think I'm missing something uh, that would be quite vital or, or, or could enhance my kit, by all means, let me know in the comment section. And hopefully you like this uh, of my uh, Saturday indoor series of uh, my gear and uh and the things I carry and it's been uh, somewhat interesting to you so I uh, hope you enjoy that guys thanks bye